Go. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Peter Gallo. Uh, I was the project manager for Zambikes this semester. I'm very excited to present our recommendations to you today. Um, just to introduce the team, Chad, if you want to. Hi, uh, I'm Kat Thomas. I'm a junior at Aid. Hi, I'm Sanjana. I'm a senior in uh, Bio and Science. I'm Daniel. I'm a sophomore government and economics major. Hi, I'm Scott. Uh, I'm a junior at Aid. Hi, I'm Caroline. I'm a sophomore in Urban and Regional Studies. And I'm Kristen. I'm a senior in Human Development. Great. Um, so, if we're going to be in Yeah. Okay, so the organization that we focused on this semester was Zambikes. Zambikes is an organization in rural Zambia which was founded in 2007 um, by three people, one of them being Vaughn, who we primarily work with this semester. Um, Zambikes is an organization that is sustainable social business. It feeds back into the community and attempts to um, invent transportation like bicycles or um, bicycle ambulances that um, feed jobs into the community as well as transportation <coughs> mechanisms. Um, we worked on three things this semester. We worked on attempting to find um, sponsors and um, reinvent the sponsorship process of this ambulances program. Um, we worked on opening up a line of credit in countries like Malawi. And third, we um, focused on looking and researching at new um, credit and funding opportunities. So like Dan just said, what going to this project, we knew Zambanks wanted to expand into Malawi and Uganda. So he was looking for a three hundred thirteen one okay, hundred and thirty thousand dollar line of credit. He also wanted to fund find sponsors to cover the production of three hundred ambulances which is, they'll go into more detail about that project later. And basically what we did for them is we revamped their, um, their materials to present to investors, as well as created a handbook of how to use those presenting materials, and then a list of potential credit and sponsorship opportunities. All right, also, um, can you go to the next slide? So basically, with their current materials, we found a lot of, they basically emphasized how much money they needed and like that was essentially it. So what we did is we took his information and kind of created a more holistic approach. Like what do they do? How do they help the community? And then why do they need that amount of money? Instead of we need this amount of money and that's done. Um, and why Zambites would be an investment that could be potentially productive to the investors and give money back to them. So uh, one of the ways we one of the things that we created to help them pitch themselves to potential investors and sponsors was through the pitch book and the cover letter. In the pitch book, we wanted to create a balance between demonstrating the social benefits of the company and as well as the reliability of the investment. So we put a lot of both qualitative and quantitative information in these. And in the cover letter, um, we made it personalized by Vaughn, um, and he can kind of tailor it depending on the investor. Um, and it states the Zambikes' financial need at the same time explaining the impact Zambikes has on the surrounding community. Um, so here are some examples of our pitch book. As you can see, we have the income statement um, where Vaughn can fill in all of his detailed financial information for potential investors. And then here we have more of the qualitative approach where we describe the products and their impact on the community. So um, in order to support Zambike's goal and mission to um, expand into Malawi and eventually Uganda, we researched different um, credit opportunities. Um, their goal would require total credit of $130,000, which would help to cover the 300 bicycle ambulances, bicycles, toolkits, um, training and distribution costs, and would also support the training and employment of 10 employees in Malawi. Um, and so after researching, we came up with three top credit opportunities, the first being Jasmine Social Investments, which helps to promote um, organizations that promote healthcare, education, and overall improving the livelihood of um, impoverished people. And it would start with uh, grants uh, ranging from 100000 to 750000 um, The next option was the Acumen Fund, which um, 
is one of their examples is they're supporting DART, which is a program that's um, reducing malaria and um, works in Africa. And capital uh, investments would start at 200000 And the last option would be the Peary Foundation, which um, also kind of promotes organizations that's in line with Zambike's mission and goal. Okay, so he's also looking for a long-term funding to help fund his ambulances and increase expansion. And we outlined, again, three potential funding opportunities that could be long-term partners uh, with Zambikes. And these include the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, who are dedicated to improving lives and combating poverty in third world countries. But one of their big development plans is the Global Development Program, which focuses on high-impact sustainable solutions, which fits perfectly with what Zambikes is doing. It's sustainable and allows the communities to build for themselves. Uh, and this would align perfectly with what the Gates Foundation is trying to currently do. Uh, the second would be the U.S. Global Health Initiative, uh, which focuses, uh, people generally think, on a lot of combating disease and a lot of those initiatives. But they do want to create a brighter future for families in the developing world, as they say. And again, they're geared towards sustainability and with ambulances and employing laborers in Zambia and Malawi, Zambikes, to do this. However, our recommendation would be the Committee for Encouraging Corporate Philanthropy. This is a group of practically the Fortune 500 in the United States. It is all the biggest corporations in the U.S. and they band together to direct corporate philanthropy to nonprofits who are making a difference in the world. And this would allow Vaughn and Zambikes to access to brand names such as Accenture, Chevron, Cisco, GE, large brand name companies which could have a long-term relationship and continue to fund and sponsor with Zambikes. Um, okay, so in terms of the ambulances program that um, people have touched on, it's basically a life-saving um, project that seeks to provide um, bike ambulances to local communities, particularly community health workers. Um, so the road and the road infrastructure in uh, <coughs> Zambia is poor in terms of cars, and so they have to rely on ox carts to transport patients from their homes to um, rural health clinics that might be um, several kilometers away. And so a uh, ambulance, which is basically an attachment to um, any bicycle or motorbike, um, can provide a safe and efficient way to access rural health clinics. Um, and a study, uh, study that was done by Boston University, um, it was a measurement and evaluation, um, basically um, found that one life is saved um, every day with, or every 12 days with uh, ambulance. Um, so part of what uh, we tried to do under the sponsorship prong was we tried to reinvent the sponsorship form that they already had already laid out. Um, there were a few structural issues with the initial form um, in terms of the order of the different sections, the budget, and um, things like that that made the sponsorship form not as accessible as it could be. So we tried to specify on um, a new outline of a sponsorship form what a sponsorship specifically entails. And then under the guidelines of an organization called the Foundation Center, which is a philanthropic organization, we created a new outline that starts with the abstract and executive summary. Secondly, organization information. Third, statement of need. Fourth, project description. Then budget, and then conclusion. Where we'd constantly be hitting on the themes of sustainability and the different um, themes that we mentioned before. Um, with this newly formatted sponsorship form, we'd also um, uh, recommend a pamphlet, which uh, Peter just handed around. Um, we would recommend both the sponsorship form, this tweaked sponsorship form, as well as the pamphlet to give Vaughn two different options that would work in terms of sponsorship. Um, three other recommendations that we have. Vaughn has never really looked into um, Christian-based grant institutions, and Zambikes was actually initially founded after a missions trip, and it is a Christian-based, it has Christian-based um, sort of foundations. So we found three Christian-based institutions, such as the Tyndale House, the um, Allen Foundation, which would be extremely helpful in um, bringing back funds to Zambikes. Secondly, um, nowhere on the form, um, the initial form, were there any sort of cost comparisons between a Zambulance and an ox bell that is usually used. So we found those numbers, um, $600 for a Zambulance that lasts usually five years, um, contrary to an ox barrel, which would be um, from $70 to $200, but would last for a few months. And then we also did an efficiency comparison, where usually um, Zambulances would take 80 minutes to get to somewhere. We calculated that while the ox barrel would take about 400 minutes, which would obviously affect the lifestyle and the way of living for many of the rural Zambians. 
And thirdly, um, many grant institutions have specific questions and answers on um, ways to apply for grants. So we, we laid out five of the most common questions and answers so that um, Zambikes and Zambulance Project could just simply apply for these sponsors without doing as much research as, as they have to do um, in the beginning. And we also, um, we also put forth the sponsorship calendar where Zambites could look at the different institutions, the different deadlines that they have for fellowships, grants, and sponsorships, so that it would be a little more easier and a little bit more of an organized way to go about sponsorships and finding fellowships. Um, okay, so um, the ambulances also uses, um, or to sponsor their program, they also have individual donors like me and you to um, support their program. But essentially, their strategy is sort of um, lumped into their strategy for approaching foundations. And so we recommended um, sort of separating that from foundations and making a more, uh, more targeted and personal strategy. Um, one approach could obviously be social media. Um, they do have a blog that they do update with um, videos and photos, which is great, but we recommend that they do this more often. Um, they also do update their um, Facebook page frequently. They don't have a Twitter account, which they can consider using, and then using Twitter feed to um, basically update their blog through Twitter. Um, but the, I think the biggest problem in this is that they don't promote these links, and so um, basically making these links available to foundations and to um, donors would be really effective. Um, another aspect is, um, so their online uh, fundraising platform is currently through their own website, which um, sort of makes it difficult for um, other people to sort of, if you don't know about the bikes, then you're not going to be able to get to their fundraising page and access um, access the way to, um, their way to donate. Um, so we um, recommended that they use the arazu.com, which is an online fundraising platform for um, lots of nonprofit organizations. Um, and it basically makes it easy to integrate your social media into it and also keep track of donors and regularly update them. Um, yeah. Um, and lastly, Razu being a universal data race, it would be extremely accessible for these donors. Um, we, Vaughn currently, in terms of following up with sponsors, there is no system to let the sponsors know how the patient is doing, let the sponsors know where the placement or the utilization of this ambulance. So we created a letter program where the sponsors would be notified after two months of the placement of this ambulance, after three months of the utilization of this ambulance, and after five months of the patient status. So we, um, the, it would encourage sort of transparency, and in a sense it would uh, bring more legitimacy to the sponsorship program, and um, we think that would be really helpful in terms of maintaining these sponsors and longevity. Yeah, and the, um, this can also be done through uh, Razu um, by just uploading um, updates frequently. Um, and our last point was just increasing um, marketing around um, key times of the year, um, including World Day of Social Justice, or stay in the holiday season, because all of these days represent values that Zambites really um, believe in. So. Um, and so here's the screenshot of the pamphlet that's being passed around. Um, so d when Dan was talking about restructuring the sponsorship form, this is sort of what the end product of it was. Um, so we have a letter from Lund, which basically explains his role in the organization and sort of why he's um, so committed to its cause. Um, and there's a um, the second page is sort of the history and the context of Zambites and the program. Um, and it also includes a statement of need um, and sort of um, how the project is implemented and how they're going to be evaluating their impact in the future. Yeah, and lastly, a lot of the social media and promotion are currently done by distributors of these Zambikes, so we would really try to centralize the promotional um, tactics to Zambikes and things like the letter writing program and things like the social media program wouldn't be done by normal distributors like USAID, they'd be done by Zambikes, the organization itself. Okay, so as mentioned previously, we don't really have Vaughn's financials, but we created a template for him to input his financials in. And so to present that in a more effective manner to the sponsors, to the credit opportunities. And really what we're trying to do is increase his efficiency, his bang for his buck. So that way, now that he has the pamphlet that he has, we directed him towards the most likely credit opportunities, the sponsors, so he can secure funding, so he can raise awareness. And these new materials will allow him to distill information to his potential clients, to his potential funders, so that they understand his mission, his goal, and they allow it allows him to connect with them in new ways and more efficient ways. So that once they do contribute, they can see what their contributes positive. 
they can see the results of doing that. So really, when you sum it all together, we really want to just make it more efficient for him to be able to connect and allow him to continue focusing on what he's doing in Zambia and the expansion to Malawi, but using these new materials connect with people more efficiently and more effectively. Um, thank you. We will accept questions.